Welcome to Good Libations, which is our program about mixology. And every episode, as we know, is an adventure into a different type of a cocktail, perhaps done different styles. Now, the cocktail that we're going to demonstrate today has never ever fallen out of popularity. In fact, it's gained popularity in proportion to the interest in Mexican food. And at first, the margarita, which is obviously what we're doing today, was popular in the Southwest and in California, basically. But as time has gone on, the interest in Mexican food has spread all through the United States so that people love margaritas. You could be in Massachusetts, you could be in Alaska, wherever. People love them. And of course, there's some controversy, we might say, about how it is that margaritas actually evolved, where they actually came from, what the history of the cocktail is. And of course, there's a lot of conflicting stories, in fact, about that, rather humorously. Um, the story that seems to have the most credibility is that a bartender in Mexico created the cocktail by request at a resort hotel where a famous lady guest was staying, and apparently she either had the name Margaret Margot or Margarita. And he concocted it using tequila, lime juice, a bit of lemon, and an orange-infused liqueur. And of course, af after that, the drink has grown into all kinds of different styles, as I mentioned. And of course, there's other reports that the margarita was created by a female bartender, supposedly, back in the late 30s or early 40s, again in Mexico and it was named after her. But regardless of the source, again, this is an immensely popular drink that people really love. And again, we're going to demonstrate two different styles of making the margarita. We're going to demonstrate the original style, and we're going to demonstrate a style of margarita that is good for parties and large groups of people. And again, we're going to do these drinks without resorting to any mixes or artificial ingredients. And you're probably thinking, oh no, you're going to make blended margaritas. Actually, no, I'm going to make rocks margaritas because blended margaritas are still drank by some people, but they've kind of fallen out of fashion while the margarita itself has never fallen out of fashion, unlike other cocktails. There didn't have to be a renaissance of the margarita but rather, it's been popular all along. But anyway, we're going to get right into a demonstration of how to make a truly fine margarita. And what I do is I like to use a shaker to make the original style margarita. And of course, I have to fill it with ice, first of all. And as I mentioned on an earlier show, it's good to store your ice so that it stays really, really cold. Because if you get ice that is in a melting phase, it dilutes the drink and takes away from that good character. And again, a lot of people today, because the palate for margaritas has grown much more sophisticated, they like to use very high-end tequilas. And of course, the use of Cointreau versus triple sec. And actually, I like to add a float of Grand Marnier at the very, very top when I make margaritas. But we're going to make them a little bit more basic and user-friendly so that they're more versatile. And anyone can make them this way. And again, it's nice if you want to use high-end tequila, but it is not necessary. We're going to use just a modest, average one to make them. And again, many of you have said, well, you know, you always pre-pour, so I don't really know how to make these drinks. So I'm going to be nice again, and I'm going to attempt to do some measuring here. As a general rule, and this is, happens to be a very nice shaker because it has a jigger style top, put about a jigger of tequila in there. And some people like to put more, but I only really put about maybe a quarter of a jigger of the triple sec, or better yet, if you can, the Cointreau. And then... They say that you should put in half a lime. I tend to like to put a full lime in my um, single margaritas. And again, I always attempt to squeeze the lime by hand because that way the juices and the oils from the peel 
are going to infuse in the drink. And that just adds an extra zest to the drink, literally and figuratively. And if the limes are difficult to squeeze, you can quarter them and it'll just f facilitate the squeezing of them a bit better. And if you want to use a hand juicer or an electric one, that's okay with a margarita. But with most drinks, I discourage it entirely, but with a margarita, you can if you wish. And as I typically do with most drinks, I like to put the spent, one of the spent shells at least within the drink. And then I add sugar. And again, you could use bartender sugar, you could use simple syrup, but in this particular case, this is just plain old table sugar. And keep in mind that most of this will not dissolve, but I think it's better to use this than to use simple syrup. Now, this is a little offbeat, but I also add, like to add a bit of frozen limeade in the margarita, because a strong lime taste is definitely preferable. And again, some people, and I think the original, um, the originator, I should say, of the margarita put lemon in it also, but I prefer just straight lime. And anyway, got the shaker top on, I'm gonna give it a good shake. And this is going to be, again, a rocks style margarita, which is much more popular and has been for actually over a decade or so versus the um, blended margarita. And these tops are always such fun to, to pull off. But anyway, I divest the entire thing in the margarita glass. And of course, you've essentially got a garnish because the spent shell is there. But if you don't wish to put the spent shell in, you can actually use either a wedge or a wheel as a garnish. And there you have a classic single serving margarita. And of course, most people actually like salt on the rim. And in demonstrating another style of margarita, which also is going to be a rocks margarita, but for large groups of people, say you're having a pool party or a summer party of some sort or a reception and you wanna make margaritas and maybe you're pairing it with different types of Mexican food. Uh, how do you make a massive quantity for a group of people without compromising quality and having a mediocre drink or using mixes again, which as you know is the nadir as far as I'm concerned of cocktails. I don't go that way. Well, I'm gonna demonstrate how to do so and to give you some tips as far as that is concerned as well. And again, there's no necessarily rules, we'll say, but good guidelines in making good drinks. And what I do if I'm making margaritas for a large group of people is I do use a blender, but I do not use um, or make frozen or blended style margaritas unless people specifically request them. And what I do is I'll make a carafe of them and pour them into pitchers and keep stirring the pitchers so that the alcohol doesn't all go to the bottom or the top. And also, you can put them in one of those lovely devices that have become very popular. They're either made of glass or plastic and they have a spigot and you can fill it with that without putting ice in it because again, you're gonna dilute the drink if you do that and it's gonna compromise the flavor and the, and the quality. But rather, in that particular form, you just pour them over rocks, over the rocks, in either a traditional margarita glass, or I like to use actually a martini glass for my margaritas, or an old-fashioned glass. And that way, again, they don't become diluted, and they're just the proper strength when they're put over rocks so that they taste good. Anyway, I'll demonstrate how to do that using a average blender, average size blender, we'll say. And again, I'm gonna put ice in the blender, but only about halfway through. And then we'll see what I do with the rest of the ingredients to ensure that there's gonna be a, a reasonably strong um, rock style margarita mass produced for a party for a large group of people. And of course, this ice is being uncooperative as per usual, but we'll do the best we can. That is probably 
about enough ice right there. And what I do, again, is I divest the contents of an entire can of frozen limeade. And by the way, it is possible to get brands of frozen limeade that do not contain high fructose corn syrup. You have to hunt for them, but they're there. And then I add basically an entire can of frozen of um, tequila into the frozen limeade can. Sounds a little scary, but actually it turns out really good. And then in addition to that, I put maybe a quarter can of triple sec or Cointreau. And actually I think this could use a tad more ice just to be on the safe side. It has to be somewhere between not too weak and certainly not so strong that you feel the hair growing out of the top of your head the next day. And anyway, I run the blender. And again, the contents of the blender, you're not going to have actually a frozen margarita. The, it's going to be properly mixed via the blender. And again, you can divest the contents of it either into a pitcher, and you can continue to make them this way and make pitcher after pitcher after pitcher, or you can use one of those handy devices, whether they be made of glass or plastic that have the spigot. And then it's so easy to serve them because you can simply turn the spigot on over your glass that is filled with the proper amount of ice. But a caveat again, um, you have to continue to stir it and usually a wooden spoon is probably the best thing to use because it has a long enough handle and you're preventing the stuff from separating from the alcohol and the other ingredients from separating and ruining the drink if you do that periodically about say every 15 to 20 minutes, whether it be with the device with the spigot or with the pitchers. And again, you can make carafe after carafe this way, and it works out beautifully. So just to demonstrate, and this time just for those of you who like to have salt on your margarita, an easy way to apply the salt is if you take a quarter of a lime or a half of a lime and wipe it around the rim of the glass, and then twirl it in the margarita salt. That way you have a nice coating of it for, again, those who like salt with their margarita. And then, this is gonna be rock style once again. So we're gonna add rocks to the glass. And that is probably about the right amount. And then, again, to make sure that this has not um, in any way separated. Just jog the blender a little bit and you can just pour it into the glass and in this particular case this is probably a little more frozen than I would like it to be but very typically if you're having margaritas at a party and you're doing this they will be done well in advance so that the thing is a total liquid at that point in time and doesn't have any traces of ice particles in it. And that way, again, when you divest it into the glass and make your rock style margarita, it's absolutely perfect and perfect for the enjoyment of everybody at the party. And a word again, um, we're just using a very modest brand of tequila. You can use high-end tequilas if you wish. And again, I personally prefer Cointreau over triple sec, but you have to kind of have deep pockets to purchase Cointreau as you do the upper end tequilas. But it isn't necessary to do so. In fact, it's not necessarily going to improve the flavor of the drink either. Some people are under the mistaken notion that, as an example, you're gonna have a superior Rob Roy if you use single malt scotch whiskey. Not at all. It's actually better to use a scotch that's more modestly priced. Same principle with margaritas. In many cases, a high-end tequila is much more well-suited for sipping versus um, using in a cocktail. So better to use one that's more modestly priced, in, in my personal opinion. 
And again, better to use, I, th I feel, limes versus lemons, although you can use a blend of both. But the main thing, again, is don't resort to using mixes. It's not necessary. Um, it's not that much more trouble, we'll say, to make them this way, which is kind of from scratch or to make them this way, which is suitable for a party. And what I typically do too, I omitted this, is I will squeeze in some fresh lime into the carafe, as well as the limeade, the triple sec, and the tequila. And this way, you're getting some of the fresh lime, and, and yes, it does make a difference because the oils will infuse in it. And it just adds that nice flourish and touch to the margarita. And again, it's interesting that margaritas have never fell out of fashion. They've had halcyon days, but they've never fell out of fashion, and they've been, they become more sophisticated with time, just as people's palates for more sophisticated forms of Mexican cuisine um, have evolved over the years. The same thing with margaritas. And as I always mention, it's good to enjoy cocktails, and it's nice to be innovative in our making of cocktails, but being irresponsible in our drinking is another story entirely. Let's use good sense in how much we consume. Let's keep our community safe and well spoken of by drinking in moderation. And thank you again for tuning in to Good Libations, which again is our show about mixology. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist, which as we know is a euphemism for bartender. But at any rate, hope you enjoy the show and hope you learned maybe just a little bit more about our favorite drink, the margarita. Thank you. Bye.